telling me I'm going crazy, but what is real says cast your long throw. What I need is to remember one thing. David L. Cook is at the top of his country gospel music career. October of last they inducted me into the Country Gospel Music Hall of Fame. And uh, they inducted me with people like Loretta Lynn, and Barbara Mandrell, and Jody Miller, and Andy Griffith. And I was the youngest one. Now I'm nominated for a double award for uh, Album of the Year, uh, Country Album of the Year. So I'm really excited about that. With recent gospel music honors, David is rated along with the best in country music. He's been performing for 28 years. He started singing when he was only five years old. And it's important to note that David performed with the Cook family singers, not to be confused with the singing Cook family. But David's life was not always so positive. In fact, his gospel singing family had a dark secret. I had a father who was very abusive. Ooh. When we walked out on the stage, he was very cordial, very nice, very pleasant. But when we got back on the bus or wherever we were going, he would then sometimes become very, very, very violent. My mother was a professional, you know, she was a model for a long time. And my father came in one night and had been drinking and uh, hit her in the face with the butt of a gun and busted a blood vessel in her face. She modeled no more. I remember sometimes where my father would sit there with a, with a gun and he would aim at her. I remember one time where he locked her in the trunk of a car. And then I remember sometimes where he'd take me personally and he would hold a gun to my head and he'd click the trigger. And no one knew if that gun was loaded or not. And all I can do is I can remember my mom screaming. Due to his traumatic childhood, David developed several medical problems. He was later diagnosed with a dissociative disorder and psychogenic amnesia. The, the dissociation is the ability of cutting oneself off from reality so that you don't have to suffer the the traumas or anything like that that you may be going through at that moment so while i was being beaten or whatever was happening i mentally i was not there physically i was there but mentally i was safe as he grew older david's condition got worse Whenever I found myself in a situation that was very stressful or something like that, it just happened. I didn't ask it to happen, it just happened. It was like second nature to me now to have these little periods of time that I couldn't recall. But people would tell me I was fine. People would tell me that they didn't see anything wrong with me. But I, I couldn't remember. And at the age of 25, David's medical problems came to a head. His body was showing signs of a stroke, and David had to be hospitalized. The left side of my mouth had fallen. Um, they, I couldn't see out of my eye. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. And so they, they took me uh, to the hospital, and they kept me in intensive care. And they did every kind of test imaginable, and it was all coming back unremarkable. There was nothing organic to it. I had a lot more than just association. I had what they call a conversion reaction, which is the manifestation of physical symptoms, which was, would relate to the stroke aspect of it. And then I had what they call a psychogenic amnesia. Imagine losing five months of your life. That's how long it was from the onset of the stroke symptoms to the day he got his memory back. I had just found out that I lost five months of my life. I lost time. I lost a lot of time. And I'll never be able to get that back. The doctors were so worried about me that they started a whole regimen of medications. And I'm talking about some very strong medications. We're talking about lithium. 
Xanax, Clonopin. David wasn't comfortable taking all of these prescriptions. He said he couldn't feel the touch of God on his life anymore due to the heavy medication. One night I was sitting in my home and I had all of these medications laid out on the table and I just got down on my hands and knees and I just began to cry. And before you knew it, I was laying flat on my face, just crying. And then I just said to Jesus, I said, Lord, if I could just feel you touch me just one more time, if I could feel your hand on me just one more time, I'll never touch any more of that stuff. And I felt the hand of God touch me. I felt him touch me on the top of my head and go all the way down my body. And I got up from there and I just took my hand and I just hit that table and I never took it. David's been off of the medication for six years. With his current Dove Award nomination and his career in high gear, he's enjoying his success. Hey, what you doing? I have two dogs that require a lot of my time and I love to go out and play with them. And with almost three decades in the country gospel music business, David has learned some powerful lessons. God is my friend. God is not some awesome being to me that is way out there in a the distance. My God is someone who can come and he can sit right here with us and he can talk with us. He's a friend. All the time that I was going through so much pain and so much problem, I could hear God saying just a few more steps. Just a few more steps. 